Friends of your word, it give it light and it give it understanding unto the simple. And I welcome to your favorite program in His presence, a program that talks about the Word of God and how we can apply the Word of God into our life so we can become a transformed, changed person from the old ways of life into the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made; we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And it's of the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has kept you and myself to witness another brand new day. We need to give all the praises, all the honor, all the adoration back unto him because he deserves our praise. The Bible in Psalm 16 verse 11 says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And as is right now, the pleasures forevermore. I'm your host for today. I'm Akikunle Akela. And the topic I have before you on this video is lessons from the fig tree. I will be doing the second part. Lessons from the fig tree part two. And we're joined by Apostle Adekayode Salako of Restoration House International Ministries in Nigeria. He's here to discuss with us on this great day. So a great privilege for us to have you to come and discuss with yeah. us on this day. Blessed moment with you. The Lord bless you. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. So before we actually go into our topic for today, lessons from the fig tree, 2019 is still young, it's still fresh. Maybe you have a word for someone out there. Uh, by the special grace of God, God have not closed year 2018, and there is special miracle labor with your name. As your faith come alive, God will deliver into your hands. Habakkuk said we should rejoice, even when the fig tree did not blossom. So I'd like you to rejoice because God needs joyful atmosphere to deliver to your hands your loaded blessing. Be rest assured, it will end in praise. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So our topic today is lessons from the fig tree. But before we actually look at some of the lessons we can learn from the fig tree, let's look at the, the fig tree. Well, by the special grace of God, the scripture likened the fig tree, uh, uh, we liken it to a, a person, the life of a person. It could also be likened to a place. It could be likened to a nation. But in this context, we want to look at it as a person. Now, uh, the fig tree... When we look at it I, like a life of an individual, uh, it simply suggests that the life of the person is expected to bring forth some unusual results. Now, God gives us life, and uh, he needs our life to affect others. So in that context, when we look at the fig tree as a human, as an individual, as a destiny of a person, it means that for us as a person, God, I mean, expects so much from us. Then also, what I also foresee from the scripture is that uh, in the days where Jesus was around, he, he, he discussed with them by the virtue of their understanding and the level of their occupation, what they are used to. If we were to be these days, maybe Jesus would have not used the feature, maybe they have used um, the in language of the Microsoft, using technology language, talking about uploading, you know, and all those stuff. But those days, they were basically into farming and, of course, and of course, rearing of um, livestock. So he speak to them in that context, but we're likening the fig tree, which is so, to the life of a human in this teaching. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you so Praise much. And to our viewers, out there, let's go into our first music video. We'll be right back with more for you. On our topic today, lessons from the fig tree, I'll be doing the second part. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Anything we are doing with God, we should know it's unto the Lord and we should determine and we should ask him for grace. Welcome back from that first music video and if you're just joining us, you're tuning in his presence on our topic today, lessons from the fig tree. And we're joined by Apostle Ade Kayo de Salako of Restoration House International Ministries. Before we went to the previous break, the foundation you actually laid as to what the fig tree signifies, talks about, is likened to an individual that is expected to bring out a result. Now let's look at some of the lessons we can learn from the fig tree. Now the fig tree himself 
when Jesus saw the fig tree, he was actually expecting to get a fruit to eat from the fig tree. So on getting to the fig tree, he was disappointed. Why? There was no fruit. And Jesus lay a course to the fig tree. And surprisingly, the next day on their return, Peter was, you know, was amazed. He said, Master, the fig tree, just like he was not expecting that to happen. So he had to call the attention of Jesus. So he said, that is the fig tree you caused yesterday. Me, I thought the tree would still be around, but now the tree I'm, is, is dead. And Jesus said, well, because there was no fruit on it. In other words, when somebody tried to project himself to what is not, that person may attract cause to himself. In other words, certain help that should come to you will be in that because you are portray portrayed yourself in a manner as if you don't need help. Oh, let's liken it to a believer. Let me, this on that dimension to it now. Now, a, a believer who should take the word of God as a nourishment to be well fed is now malnourished. That believer in no time will still die. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If a curse was laid upon somebody or upon the fig tree and we saw the effect the next day, the same thing happened I think I saw that Daddy Joe was trying to, I mean, look at that even from this scripture when we were liking, I mean, looking at scripture in John chapter, chapter 15. You know, if you separate yourself also from the, 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 the word of God, uh, what happened to someone who is caused is similar thing that's going to happen. So such a person will be in that. There are some certain things that should come to you that will not come. Praise God. Mm, hallelujah. So let's, let's go into our Bible reading for today, which is taken from Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. The Bible says, He speak also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought food thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why come it eat the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dog it. Verse 9 says, And it bear fruit. Well, and if not, then after thou shalt cut it down. And I also want to add act chapter 4, verse 36. Acts chapter 4, verse 36. The Bible says, And Joseph, who by the apostles was son named Barnabas, which has been interpreted the son of consolidation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus. Then we will now go to the last Bible reading for today, which is Acts 5.5. 5. The Bible says, And Anas, hearing this word, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came upon all them that heard this thing. Well, from those um, scripture, we saw that uh, there is a likability from those scripture. Well, the, what they call in Bible college uh, typology. You know, uh, the fig tree was caused, and uh, of course, uh, we were told that um, if is given another opportunity, well, uh, it may live. But if not, after the opportunity was given, that the fig tree dies. Now, when you look at this man who were, that was used as a point of reference, uh, we, we, he gave a certain thing to the Lord. He gave, I mean, his money, his wealth to the Lord after, I mean, the proceed of what he gained from what he sold. The Bible says he laid down the apostles' feet. Now, that's a good thing to do. But on the other hand, the last Bible verse which we read, we saw Ananias and Sapphira, which also did the same. But um, they, they kept part of it. In other words, pretending. You know, God loved people who are, who are pretenders. Now, he, 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 she, he, he kept part of it. And that when he came to the apostle, even though he had a good cause, but on his way, I think the devil entered him. And that, that was how he lost it. Now, he, he, he told Apostle Peter, this is all the proceeds. And went, are you sure this is all? He said, yes. Then he said, you have lied to the Holy Ghost. Apparently, this man never knew that for everyone who has a close relationship with God, a carrier of the Holy Spirit. And not just carrier, they have his presence manifesting around them. So they are not standing alone. So he thought he was just talking to Peter, not knowing the Holy Ghost was beside him. He said, you are just lying to the one standing beside me. He said, well, I don't know if there's anyone who was around you. He said, but, uh, he said, but well, the judgment is in his hand. And the man fell and died. Now, in between the time he fell and died, one thing that really gets me up to now, that 
for about three hours. No one could intimate to the wife of what has happened. That your wife has been carried, your husband has been carried for, for burial also. So the woman came also because they have planned it. So I said, oh, what about what your husband said? She said the same thing. So the same consequence befell her. She also fell and also lost her life. In other words, God is a, is a faithful God. The Bible said in the book of Galatians, he said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap. All I just need to say, you know, from this three scripture was that God loves us to be sincere. Just like what David said in the book of Psalm 51. He said he desired the truth in the inward belly. God desired the truth. So ah, this is X, Y, Z. Of course, you are the owner of the property. If you keep up, I say, okay, I'm giving you 10%. He won't still slap you. It's your own. Because it's a will. God needs our willingness. So I don't know why they should keep and begin to lie about it. Oh, we saw this in 100, but uh, myself and I, we agreed to drop 50. It's fine. God will say, okay, no problem. He's welcome. He loves a cheerful giver, not a grudgy giver. So he loves sincerity. And anytime somebody tries to play on the integrity of God, I think God doesn't like it. You know, Psalm 18, he said, to be forward, to the forward, I will be forward. To the quicker, I will be In other words, any pattern you choose, you will meet him there. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> mm, hallelujah. So going to the open heavens, our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboe wrote, Just as the Lord Jesus Christ cursed the fruitless fig tree in our lesson today, we see a similar scenario playing out in today's Bible reading. These two examples are indicative of Evans' standpoint of zero tolerance for fruitlessness. This principle is laid bare by the Master himself in John chapter 15 and verse 2, where he said, Every branch in me that bear not fruit, it taketh away, and every branch that bear fruit, it pourges it that it may bring forth much fruit. Evans value fruitfulness and would rather preserve and purge a fruitful tree to make it bring forth much fruit. On the other hand, every unfruitful true tree stands the risk of being uprooted and done away with hmm. that, that's very deep huh. in other words when someone fail to be productive in no time the person start dying in no time but look at it now he that bring forth fruit God looks after that from that revelation of the scripture. God looks after those who are productive. God ate for a fruit, for a tree not to bear fruit. In other words, even as humans, there are some certain things we cannot tolerate. If you are putting investment in a place and you are not getting results, you won't like it. You will not be happy. There is no parent who will be excited that a four-year-old child is still crawling, not walking. No parent will be happy. So even not only God, even human beings don't like it. When you have your working organization and your boss say that you are not productive, they can't con contain you in there. They will sack the fellow. So in other words, it's not only God now that loves productivity. Everyone, I, I think we got it from God. So, but for, for someone who is productive, who is bringing forth fruit, who is, I mean, getting result, a result-oriented fellow in the set goal or divine assignment God has for the individual, God is always excited. He will say, that's my boy. That's my boy. But when you are not doing it, it's not happy. And in no time, they'll be looking for replacement. Just like when Elijah said, oh, I'm the only one standing. He said, oh, we have replacement. There are 7,000. Only that they have not shown up. There are 7,000. So God have replacement. But failure to do that, that person is at risk. Death could come. As a matter of fact, the, the day God told me that our prayers are answered only on purpose. I said, why? He said, when we pray according to his will, he heard it. So prayer will not just be answered just because you pray. Prayer are answer predicated to the purpose in which God has wired you to accomplish under the heaven. So that's why at times people see, say, I prayed, God is not answering. No, you are not praying at the right one. And according to what you are expected to do at that time. Another thing God told me that was mystery to me, he said your preservation under the heaven is also predicated on your purpose, what you are about to achieve under the heaven. So if there is no purpose, I think God will just look away. So death and anything can happen. So when God was sharing that with me, I think humorously just me said, do you think anybody, any which we attack, Pastor, yeah, I said, that's my father. He said, he won't because he's serving the purpose. 
for his generation. He's serving the purpose. He's doing what we ask. He's the one who's going to press him. They press you because they are not doing what he has to do. You are not as good to be pressing them. Saying as long as you are not doing, they will be pressing you. <laughs> so when we don't do his will and when we don't bring forth fruit, God is not happy. And that person stands the risk of being cut off. And being cut off may not be instant debt. It could be there are some benefit that should come to you. There are some sin enjoyment that you should have in life. There are some certain things your hands should get. Those things will be deprived from you. So let's not just look at the physically that death immediately. Of course, uh, people they they, they, they saw that sinners shall die, but uh, some of them are still sinning, they are still living, they are doing all terrible things. But it's a total separation from God, spiritually dead, and the physical will come after. There's a certain thing also that they will not get by the virtue of the way they live their life. Praise God. Mm. Hallelujah. So continuing the hope and events, our Father in the Lord, Pastor, he had the way for the roots. In continuation of the subject matters studied yesterday, we must never lose sight of the lesson learned not to lead a fake life. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 5 tells of a man in the early church who attracted capital punishments to himself by living a pretentious life. One thing we learn from the story of Ananias and Sapphira is the lie they told was unnecessary. This fact is buttressed by Peter's question to Ananias in Acts chapter 5, verse 4, saying, Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not thy, in thy power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto mm. God. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is deep. This is deep. You know, from the question, I think that question was coming, if the man Ananias or brother Ananias, because his brother is in church, are you getting me now? And of course, we have so many brothers or many sisters, many wonderful child of God who are missing, who are still missing this, even in this present time. Now, what God expects from us, all of us, is just sincerity, just like I cited the other time, that David said, he desired the truth in the inward being. Now, if this is your property and it's being sold, Willingly, nobody is putting gun on your head. There was no can say, hey, go and say, you did that willingly. Oh, Holy Spirit must have motivated you. Then the Holy Spirit will start the work. You, 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 you neglected him at that point, and you begin to listen to another voice of the devil. So that was the reason why God wanted to deal with this young man, because the process was initiated by God. It was God who motivated him. To go and sell the land. Others were also doing. Okay, he also want to do it at the same time. Okay, it's a good thing to do. You know, there are some there are some things that uh, um, they, they are good, and you feel okay, this thing is good. Let me also do it. Whether he feel is good or God also motivated him. But now I think in this process he neglected God. He, he kept part of it. And when Peter was asking, I think for me this question should have made him to now come to a place of. Realizing, I say, ah, who this we started this, and I'm doing it for God. Why am I doing anything? Even though I've agreed with my wife, I think, sir, it is 100, but uh, we're not, but okay, we'll still give up. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just like that, the Jew, our father in the Lord, cited an example some time ago when he went to meet our beloved um, uh, superintendent who have gone to be with the Lord, Reverend Joash Akinda Omi. And, uh, and on his way, he, he bought an orange. I still listen to that message on my phone, midnight. I listen to it every night. Now, he bought an orange, and when he got to Baba, you know, Baba said, oh, this orange is good. You bought it on the road? Okay. He said, yes. And uh, all of a sudden, he said, hey, hey. This question was to make you to say right it. He said, in our class, he said, well, uh, actually, Baba, uh, I bought it when I was in school. He said, ah, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy. So, I think this question should have helped this young man. But yet, in the presence of those people who were trying to help him, he still lied. That, I think that was why he got the capital punishment. God hates those who are pretentious. You know, he loves sincerity. And I think that's one of the reasons why David excels so much. Oh, Lord, I've done this. I've messed it up. He was just open. He reported himself before God called him. The only time he did not report himself was when uh, Nathan prophet had to come and say this, this. And immediately Nathan said, well, he, he immediately admitted. You can't do that for King Saul. That person will be killed. Whether you're a prophet or God, God is beside you, he will kill the prophet. But you could see the heart of David, that his heart was submissive. He has the heart of flesh. Oh, you are the... He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this man should have said, oh, is that all? Ah, well, is there are leftovers. But we agree to keep it. We will give this 50%. That is, and God will still accept it. I think this should give every believer a lesson. And when we're dealing with God and fellow human beings, we should learn 
how to do things in a, I mean, without pretense, just be sincere about everything we, we do. Mm, hallelujah. Praise Thank you for God. that insight. And to our viewers, out there, let's continue to our Bible reading. You know, you will be right back. Please stay with us. Anything we are doing with God, we should know it's unto the Lord and we should determine and we should ask him for grace. Welcome back from the Bible reading. When any of you just joining us, you tune into His presence on our topic today, lessons from the fig tree part two. To continue in the hope and of our Father and the Lord for the road. In other words, and alas, why should you lie to the Holy Spirit who knows everything? The land belongs to you. If you give 50% and choose to keep the remaining 50 for your personal use, nobody will query you for doing so. The problem with Ananias and Sapphira was that they wanted to be recognized, to have a virtue they did not actually possess. Prior to their unfortunate act, Joseph Baz had sold his land brought the total proceeds and has been commended by the apostle. He was even given a nickname, the son of consolation. And Ananias and Sapphira wanted to receive the same level of commendation, but they could not do what Barnabas did. And so they lied to earn it. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. You must therefore learn from the fig tree and from Ananias and Sapphira that living a fake life can only earn you a bad reputation, shame, and untimely death. This will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Uh, well, uh, if I may use the simple things, the, the, from this um, illustration given by our Father in the Lord, that the Gio, now, uh, they were trying to rub shoulder with someone who did the same but they didn't have the ability to let go of all. So in other words, we should try as much as possible not to live our life in competition. Every man has grace and the ability and capacity God has given to us. I believe this couple, our brother and sister, Sapphire and Ananias, as staying between their level of grace, they won't try this punishment. And of course, if they are not trying to do a competition, we see that many a time these days that people are in the uh, business of competition. Of course, we need to understand that we're not here to compete, but we're here to complete or to complement each other. And that, that, that's that because every man has their level of their grace. Grace, is, grace divers. Grace divers. So, and that we are in the same church does not mean we are grace mates. I think many people don't understand that. So this, this, this happened to them because they lack the capacity in the first place. They're trying to do eye service, showmanship, and they're trying to compare themselves with someone which has been divinely graced to live his life in such a manner. Well, every believer should learn from this, and the fig tree, I mean in particular, that our life should reflect Christ. We should be, I mean, doing things in between our reach and not to try to uh, uh, impress anyone. Let's just be ourselves. We don't need to impress anyone. Let's be ourselves. I remember years back, uh, myself and my wife, there are people who invite us to occasion and they will say this, I shall be. Of course, at that time, many years ago, of course, by God's way, my marriage is 15 years this year. You know, many years ago, we just look at ourselves, do you have me for you? We, don't have you. we say, sorry, we are not buying you, I shall be. If we, you know, and we are just ourselves. Some of them, we, when we get to the kitchen, they won't treat us fine. They'll be like, you know, and kind of, we, don't, we don't send any, we are just ourselves because we know there's time for everything. Men are in levels, men are in sizes. I mean, so they, they said. So let's learn to be ourselves. Let's manage ourselves in between the content of what God's given to us. And let's try my response not to compare ourselves with ourselves because we end up becoming a fool. May the Lord increase our understanding in Jesus' name. Amen in Jesus' name. And thank you so much. And so of your side, let's continue to our next week, which will be so him. We'll be right back. In your prayer. Where I belong in your prayer. Anything we are doing with God, we should know it's unto the Lord, and we should determine and we should ask Him for grace. 
Welcome back from that human. If you're just joining us, you tune into this presence. And this is the time of the program where we discuss our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from Acts chapter 5, verse 3. The Bible says, But Peter said, and then I asked, Why are Satan filled that I had to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the prize of the land? And in line with that, there's a prayer point our Father and the Lord said we should pray. He said we should pray, Father, please cause me to be fruitful in Jesus' name. Please remove vanity from my heart and don't let me die before my time. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we pray in the name that is above our name. We ask that you please help us in the name of Jesus. Give us grace in the name of Jesus. Help us to be fruitful. Help us to be fruitful. Remove vanity from our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much. And so have you all Let's continue our prophecy declaration. Stay with us. Father of all fathers, thank you that at last, I can stand boldly as a father to all these your children. And it is in your name that I'm blessing them tonight. Every one of you who regard me as your daddy, you shall be blessed. My God, we take you higher than your dreams in Jesus' name. Amen. Because my God will fight for you, you will enjoy victory without a fight. Because my God will promote you, you will enjoy success without a sweat. Amen. Because my God is the controller of heaven and earth, I decree from this moment all the powers in heaven we come to your assistance. Amen. The resources of the earth will flow into you. Amen. Beginning from this moment, help us, we seek you out to help you. Because my Father in heaven will be a shield over you, destroyers will never come near your home again. Amen. Because my God is a great provider, your hands will never be empty again. As long as there is water in the ocean, your anointing will never run dry. Amen. As long as morning follow the night, you will enjoy the mercies of the Almighty God. My Father in heaven, the one who is the God that is more than enough, we from now on see to it that your joy will overflow. Beginning from tonight, when you knock one door, seven will be opened unto you. obstacle that the enemy may want to put in your way will become stepping stone to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you turn, you will find favor with God and favor with men. Amen. 
and your children will be greater than you. Amen. The almighty God that I serve We answer all your prayers from now on. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Welcome back from that prophecy declaration. I believe you've claimed every prophecy that has gone forth on you. Sir, so before we let you go, finally, as to all your final thoughts to our viewers and lessons from the fig tree. Well, um, I think I will say this, that every believer should stay in between the grace God has given to them. And of course, grace can also get increased. Amen. You can increase in grace. You can ask God for divine enablement. And of course, from the fig tree, whatever God has given to us, he expects us to use him to his glory in the service of the Lord. We must ensure we are fruitful. And how do we get that to, I mean, I mean, happen is often a time we should ask God, what do you have me to do for you? What do you have me to do? Of course, when they call for seed in church, at times some people come out, they don't redeem the seed. I've seen that, of course. Being a shepherd for over the years, we've seen that happen. They will come out and they, you see, that Bible said, when you make a vow, you end up becoming a fool when you don't redeem it. So many a time, people try to show because somebody came out that their friend says, giving the devils will now come out. And they know they're not going to redeem the pledge or the vow. So we should live in between the grace God has given to us. And when anything we are doing with God, we should know it's unto the Lord and we should determine and we should ask him for grace to be able to do. And the Lord will teach us, I mean, more understanding as regards how we should be productive in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you so much. I will celebrate God in your life. And we're confident that it has begun a good work in you, perfect to the very end in Jesus' Amen. name. And above all, thank you for making time to be with us on this great day. Amen. Same here. Thank God for your blessing. Amen. And so if you also had, I believe we've learned so many things on our topic today, lessons from the fig tree. And I believe you'll be blessed in the mighty way. Perhaps you have any comments on the leaders. I guess you share with us on Facebook. And I want to say keep watching our God bless you.